All so right. You missed the first three. <laughs> So we preheated the whole hub a little bit. And then we heat up right where your bolt is on quite a bit in one spot to melt the Loctite. Melt, Loctite melts at 350. See, maybe that's what I was doing wrong, was trying to heat it from the front side, from the bolt head, instead of the hub, where the Loctite is. Actually, we're using a gold snap-on bit, which is the strongest one out there. Now, the zip gun works good, too. The half-inch zip gun, not a 3 a so you want the heavy knock of a half-inch. You want to get a couple good knocks, and then unscrew and not beep, 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 back and forth forever which is what a 3 ace would do. Now that one you screwed up because you broke the piece off in there, so I can't yeah. do anything about that. So look out. Some dummy. Ah. I've got a nice good amount of heat going right now. All right, now we can go ahead in front and use a carbide drill bit or a super hardened drill bit. Not too many people have those in their backyard. So we're going to do it the old fashioned. We're going to grind a piss out of it and try to get it out that way. So putting the heat to this bearing right here, is that going to cause any kind of damage? Yeah, we got to put a bearing on it. Okay. We didn't say this was a free process, did we? Nope. <clears throat> okay. That was just the concern I had trying to do it at home. <laughs> Star is still in there though. Star is kind of dumpled in there a little bit now. Yep. It was in there pretty deep. <clears throat> I think it might have come out of there now. We'll find out. We got to drill it. Yeah, that's <clears throat> what you get from buying, you know, tools from O'Reilly, Power Master, garbage, impact grade, nonetheless. That's a good impact grade. <laughs> up the top of the line, mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. Now, you got two ways of getting this out. It looks like it's a dimple drill mark now, so it might be, I might have ground it to the point where we're at the bottom now. See that dimple right there? It looks like we're right, maybe right there now. I see it. <clears throat> or it might just be a false illusion. We ground the whole thing out. Now, if it's soft, we can go ahead and hit it with a drill bit. It'll go right down, the head will pop off, we're done. If it's hard, that ain't gonna happen. 
You have to use a harder drill. The other option is you just keep grinding this until the head falls off. So are you keeping this rotor for any purpose? I am not. So we don't care if we go all the way through it then? I really don't. So I don't feel like wasting a drill bit, so... I'd rather waste, my, waste some grinding material here, which we got plenty of material to waste. That well, makes two of us. Where do you get those, by the way? Buy what? These heads. They're right down there in a the big box. <laughs> Where do you buy them from? <laughs> eBay? <laughs> uh, I bought these on eBay, yeah. <laughs> All right. These are Norton. You buy high quality? Yep. You got a light right here. You find out what you want, and then you go searching for the part numbers, and eBay pops up a lot of stuff. So here's some kind of a part number there. It was made in 8 to 10. It was out of 15. I can't tell. It's dark. So anyway, you find out what you like, and you go buy it. That's what I do. I don't like buying retail, so I buy it where I can get it cheap, but I like buying good stuff that holds up. Well, that looks like it's going to hold up for a while. No, that's, a, that's <laughs> the second or third stone that's been on this grinder in the last 40 years. So, And I think I bought a 12-pack of those, so I'm good to go. <laughs> and this is a Chicago Nomadic made in the USA grinder. And you definitely have to Loctite this thing on there because when you hit reverse, I mean, you get off the throttle, it unscrews and starts chasing you around the floor. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> All right. Chews up your ankles like a chihuahua. It probably won't hurt <laughs> if I throw a little oil on this thing because I haven't oiled it the last hundred times I've used it. That was three drops, wasn't it? Yeah. Close enough. So that's what I thought. It's good enough for government work. Now that's air tool oil or small of mystery oil, I forget which. And then I got some tribodine additive stuck in there, so I got some fancy shit you can't buy. <laughs> there. there you go. We're trying to make the bearing. Only at Tatro Machine on the West Coast. Yeah, we're trying to bury. We're trying to do custom stuff here. Okay, I'm gonna just grind this thing out of here. Flip it up. It's cool. Yeah, I know. Oh, it fell off. This is bad. I think it's warped. 
quite possibly. Make good wall art though. Okay. Now you gotta get this out of here. And if we're lucky, it's loose. Where my pliers at? Should be a pair of pliers laying right there somewhere. Oh, they're right there, Dumbass. I didn't see them. <laughs> this has a little bit of Loctite on it. You didn't want to quite unscrew. More heat. Yep. Exactly. More than that. So you want to heat the body. We just want to get about 350 is all we want to do. Right where the bolt is. Where the threads are to melt the Loctite. Mm -hmm. See how it comes off when the Loctite's free? Yep. You just have to melt the Loctite. I think it's also a good idea to note that on a spoke wheel like this... Now when this, it starts to bind up again, stop, reheat it. Right. The Loctite will re solidify and get tight again. So that one's a little harder to get out than the other one was. Mm -hmm. So on a spoke wheel like this, it's safe to stick heat to the hub like that because you have all of this open space before the tire. But if you're doing this on a mag wheel oh, or a steel wheel, doesn't matter. If you're going to stick a lot of heat to it, oh, I don't care. Pull the valve core out and let the air out of the tire because the tires have been known to heat up and explode in your face. Yeah, do you know how much heat it would take to do that? It takes a lot. You have to have the thing on fire. I don't worry about it. Of course, I've never been accused of being that safe around here. So. Safety squints engaged. Only if we need to. No, I wouldn't grab this with my bare hand right now. It might be warm, even with my hands. Now, one advantage of this being hot now, this bearing will come out a lot easier now. What's the best way to get it out? Uh, tool. Tools are good. You got a tool? Not here. Well, that doesn't help us. I have a hammer, does that count? Uh, well, it is a tool. Probably not the proper tool. Not the one we're going to need? No. Okay. Right, that goes back where it was. You can carry this. All right, get out of my way. I'm going to roll it instead of carrying it like you do. This doesn't usually work, we'll try it. Three quarter. And a big steel hammer. See, where will I find one of those out? It goes right there. I need a big chunk of something to beat on. Top secret shit over there. <laughs> you can edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> like I did around this place. <laughs> when was the last time I edited anything? I've never seen it. Tells you about how good that tool works. See, that didn't, that's supposed to go in there, expand it out, and pop the bearing so right out. What? What is that called? It's called a piece of crap that doesn't work. What I need is I need a steel base to put on here, not that thing. This 
called a Motion Pro wheel bearing removing tool. Oh, it's made by Motion Pro. Yeah. <laughs> There's a slot in there somewhere. There it is. They make good parts. Not oh. necessarily <clears throat> the greatest quality of tools. This isn't banging in there because it's bouncing too much. That's two times we tried it. That works about 10% of the time at best. <laughs> but it's only a hundred bucks. The bad part was I couldn't find the set, so I bought another set. It doesn't work any better than the first set I bought. I have no idea why you couldn't find it. I gotta do more expensive stuff. Uh, I gotta find the Jim's tools. too much. You're supposed to have like three to five thou. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well it's supposed to be three to five thou, so you have to figure out how to do that. So you can just put wash in until it doesn't move and pull out one or two until it does. <clears throat> All right, I'll set in there for you, so. Okay, bye. All right, more free tech advice on the phone. Remember, I like working for free. At least everybody thinks I do. Nobody likes working for free. I guess I do. I do a lot of it. Okay, that doesn't fit in there very well. Nope. That's the wrong size. How about that one? Looks like it fits. It fits in too good, I can't get it out. I need some gravity to help me. See, I never remember how to use this tool because I don't use it enough. Okay, I need a, something to run all the way through. You got a big socket? Somewhere around here. An extension. Ratchet. How about that? Weld it on. Oh shit, it's American made. It fits. Go figure. Yeah, I know it's hard to believe. Well, something came out. I'm probably doing this wrong. I don't remember how to do it. <clears throat> I don't know if I can put this in this way. Oh, I can do it that way. Okay. I do realize if you don't use your tools at least once a year, you forget how to use some of them. Fact. So you have to figure out how to use them. I do know this will not work in a three-quarter hole. Guaranteed. Okay, that goes on there like that. That's fancy. 
That's a lot too. I believe it. Size that. Bigger than this one? Yep. 11 sixteenths. Bigger than this one. It's not metric either. How about this? Uh, three eighths. We just had out. Oh, I didn't see the, oh, the not flat on it. Five eighths. Aha! There you go. Okay, we're, we're getting there. What size is this one? Whatever size you want it to be. <clears throat> Close enough. You know, something breaking or is it coming out? We'll find out. Something's going to let go here in a minute. We'll see what it is here shortly. Oh, I think I broke it. Mm -hmm. Oh, the bearing came out. Damn. Thought I broke it for a minute. Whatever it was, it sounded expensive. Okay, now you got to take this thing apart. We should put some grease on this thing. Ah. See, now next time you use it, you can reference a video to remember how you put it together. Yeah, I'll, I'll, look through those, I'll make sure I'll look through those three videos I have online. Yeah, I'm all over that. Now, the problem is every time you do this, this tool gets hard to use because the flat spots are on the thread, so you screw the threads up. Let me get a close on it. Now you should put a thrust brain on here that works a lot easier than that stupid washer. Right? Just a little bit. Just a little. There, I'm hot. There. Now I got my appropriate gear on now. So you lubricate that with rust. Yep. When was the last time you put any form of lubricant on the bearings? Never. This is the first time, well, the second time I've taken the wheel off of the bike since I've owned it in the last year. Preventative maintenance. I don't know if this will fit. Me. I thought I'd just get on it and ride it. There you go. That's not even a, a 
a factory Harley part. That's just a standard piece of pipe that somebody cut down and stuck in. Okay. If it works, it works, right? It might have worked. <laughs> Maybe. Now, sometimes these things overlap the bearing. In your case, I don't think so. So I have had an issue with this bike ever since I've owned it. It seems to... Is that a personal either problem or more <laughs> side problem? Honestly, don't know. That is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it tracks real bad. Um, I wondered if it was a bent frame or if the wheel was just out of alignment. Um, so last night, whenever I took it apart, I found out that one side of the swing arm mm -hmm. on the inside where the spacer mates to the <coughs> swing arm mm -hmm. um, was wallowed out real bad and the swing arm was dented in. The tubing had caved in. So you need a new swing arm? Um, no, so I took my swing arm off last night. I straightened it. I welded everything back up, filed it all down flat and straight. And the wheel, whenever I mocked it all up, yeah, bolted right on now, much we better. Have no room to get in here to, to do this. You see that? So we have to pull the pulley off in order to get that bearing up. Maybe. Or you can hedonize it. Which one do you want to do? It's not even a normal size. Whatever's easiest. Whatever works. Whatever works. Not bad theory. Be a metric nut. Hmm. I guess that is. Good quality impact wrench. Where? Makes all the difference in the world. 175 pounds of air pressure. <laughs> and it's not regulated either. Hmm. There it is. to be working. What am I doing wrong? Doing something. I don't even unscrew or anything. Nothing wants to unscrew. Yeah. 
So, for whatever reason, that would not do anything. So if the bearing's hitting on the inside of the pulley, or what the hell happened there? Just come right out. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's why you use a press after the first one, but I'm trying to make a look at the video by using the tools. Screw the tools. I'm going to knock it out with some real pressure now. Okay, all I need is something long and skinny. One down from that one. Don't need no fancy tools, just need a hammer. That's what you do when all else fails. Just get a bigger hammer. Yeah. It does look bad. Well, if they weren't before, they are now. Where's your new set? Somewhere on the shelf. Over there. <clears throat> Over there. Yeah. Over there. Did you go out grabbing a pair of uh, three-quarter bearings off the shelf there? Um. Uh, You're pointing the right direction. Let's go grab them. Right yep. there. Three quarter. What do they say? Saying you're not even close. Fits all 25 millimeter applications made in China. Whoa, I don't want to show that. <laughs> Three quarters. Bummer. A few small balls. You didn't like China though, did you? Uh, as long as they're all balls, I guess I could. Nice American made all balls, China yeah. shit? <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Designed in America, made in China. Comes with a sticker. Well, that's fancy. I'll save that and put it on my new toolbox. Now these are double ball because they got, they're wide. If you get the little narrow ones, those are single ball. They, they don't wear out. They don't last half the time that these things do. Didn't know that. So your new bike's one of those little skinny narrow ones. What's that tell you? Designed to fail. <clears throat> new bikes suck. Pressing tool fits in the hole, perfect. I need something on the press on the outside that's semi flat. Nope, it must be the cut down special for that application. See, mm -hmm. wonder where you got that from. 
I think I fell out in a yard. <laughs> it's still got the pipe in it. <laughs> got That's funny. <laughs> Looks like cast iron too. Bring that tube over with you over there. Okay, now this one we're going to have to push on the large flat area. Something looks like this for that. If that'll work. Probably just too big to go in there. We got a cure for that. Okay, it bottomed out. What happened? tons pressure at the end. It was only like half a ton at best on the other side. <clears throat> now when I push it in from the other direction, it's going to push this one back up a little bit. And what's the correct depth? Should it be even? When it hits the shoulder, like you're, this, you're all the way down. Okay. We probably have probably elevation issues right now. See the elevation issues? I see. I see. I wonder what part of Home Depot that tube came from. Schedule 80. <laughs> you now if you have a three quarter inch axle stuff in the hole, it lines up a lot better. Did you bring that? Sure did not. Why not? Um... Didn't know I was buying wheel bearings. Oh, okay. That's a good thing. It's a good thing you came to Tatro. It's always a good thing you come to Tatro. He does shit right. Or somebody do. They get to hold the axle up there. Awesome. Quit 
moving. Quit going down. All right. <clears throat> Shove the axle all the way up. So now the axle goes in and out, see? So that means the sleeve's lined up. And the sleeve is locked in there because it's still in there. And they rotate freely. Now you want to see if your wheel is straight. Is it wobbling? Mm-mm. Okay, it's straight. Oh. Right, true it for you too. How's that? Perfect. <clears throat> now that's my bill. Well, rotate freely now. They didn't do that very well before. I'll be honest, I didn't even look at that whenever I pulled the bike. Uh, Nobody pulled the wheel off. The Sign for the front of your shop. <laughs> no, don't need one. Just All right. So, is your brake rotor? That's a good sign. Good. Where's your bolts? Got to buy them from you. Fresh out? <clears throat> yep. Fresh. You want some three ace bolts? Uh, that would be correct. Those probably fit better than anything else. are made in use of China. Except like they left off the China part. It's usually a good thing. You mean to tell me you don't need red Loctite on this? Not done enough. <laughs> I'm looking for my tools. Remember that tool we were using earlier? Oh, the good, the good one, the quality Snap-on Gold. Now, when you ever use a, something slimy, it beats around back and forth like this. You need a lot of balls to torque anything. Hmm. So the manual says use red Loctite on the rear, but doesn't say to use red Loctite on the front. Mm-hmm. I would know I don't read the manual. I figured that much. <laughs> what is the the difference in using the red Loctite on the rear versus just standard blue Loctite? I understand the red holds better. This is low strength, medium low is medium strength. So you got a high and medium strength. And if you want to know what that means, you have to go on the website and look it up and see how much tensile strength is different between the two. But they use the red because the rear brake rotor is under more stress because it's the wheel that's under power from the engine. Nope. No? I don't know why they do what they do. I don't care. I do what I want to do. Sounds good. You want to stand it permanently? Well, I don't have any intention of taking it. <laughs> Which way does it rotate? That way. Yep. Reverse. Bike goes forward, rotor goes backwards. Mm -hmm. 
So you go one, two, max. With a good impact. One, two, that's all you need on that one. Make sure you're all the way in. You now with the rundown speed, you get a lot of speed up. It goes quick. And one more. Now if I keep on this, I'll just twist them right off, or I'll break the bit, one or two. Well, I'm good at breaking bits. Now if you want to check to see how tight those are, go for it. But they're not moving. You have to know your tools. I know my tools. The sticker's tight. Yep. A little bit of plastic on that one, though. There you go, nice and showy for your show bike. Perfect. What are you laughing at over there? <laughs> <laughs> now, are these tight? Tight ish. How loose are they? You're supposed to check your spoke torque every now and then, you know. So I checked them the other day with a wrench and. Did they move? They didn't, <clears throat> they didn't sound dead. The ones that I could get to with the wheel mounted on the bike, I didn't lift it up and spin them all the way around. Oh, my wrench must be in back. It's not in the book. These appear to be more rusty than tight. This should all be tightened a little bit. These are all a little bit loose. So when's the last time you torqued them or did anything to them? I've never done anything with them. Well, that explains a lot. I did what everybody else does that's broke. Ignore it? Um, yeah. You have to let the air pretty out. Pretty much. Might be a while. Where's your valve cord too? <laughs> It's easy on the tube, but you got some fancy one on there. So what do you want the air out for? Uh, so that it takes the tension off of the tube. So that it's easier to turn the nuts on the spokes. So it keeps the wheel straight. And so that it takes the tension off if of the If you have hook. a rubber tube pushing hard against the something that you're rotating, it wants to put a hole in whatever you're... You don't want to pinch the tube. No, you want to, don't want to put a hole in the tube. So if you let the air out, the tube just falls away, and you can load on it. It doesn't hurt anything. Okay, so we want to torque these all a little bit. You know, so they're pretty loose. How tight should they be? I would assume Tighter tight enough. Well, well, it depends if you're on the brake or not. Not while I'm on it. You better tighten them up. <laughs> loose spokes will break, tight ones will not break. That one was really loose. Do you ride two up on the bike or one up? Mostly one up because it's a sportster. That one there. Occasionally two up would be nice. This one here is screwed up. Come on, I got to go tighter. But the harder you drive and the more weight that you're having to pull all the time, then the tighter these spokes need to be. Okay, so we just went one turn all the way around on that side. Now we go over this side and do the same thing. So you want to start at the same spot, the valve stem. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should tighten instead of loosen. It helps. Now if you do everything equally, the rim will stay relatively in the same spot. I was going to ask that, and then I figured it out when you said one turn each side. One flat actually, but one turn of four flats. So you 
some of these are kind of loose. Some are tight. And some are rusty like this one. Let's see, it doesn't want to move. Oh, they might break too. I hope not. That one might break because it's not moving. You usually have to go back and forth and a little bit they might snap off. Mm -hmm. Now if you snap one off, it's not a good sign. No. This is another one I can't move. So if you can't move it, don't move it. Oh, loose. Am I still tightening or are these loose? Hey Scooby! Scooby's coming to help. That one's loose. You can get an extra one on that one because it's loose. How often should you check those? Depends on how loose they get. I tend to over tighten my stuff, so I, don't, I never check them because they're always tight. So that's a fairly new tire. It's got uh, maybe 3,500 miles on it. Mm -hmm. And supposedly, whenever the tire was mounted, they did all that. They never check spokes. Okay, so let's pick it that whole side again. I'm going to go with this side and give it one more. Dinner time! <laughs> Kobe didn't like that. Not very happy either. Okay, so that's two flats on both sides. That's considerably tighter than it was. I see that. tighter <laughs> because they're still moving which means they're still loose now when you put this on the bike you can rotate it and just fab up something that's laying next to the rim over here someplace mm -hmm. I did that one already. and you can um, roughly true it okay Just round it off. That would be the one that didn't want to move before. So now the nipple's fucked up on it because I just rounded it. That one doesn't want to move either, so I think we'll quit moving on that one also. And when you get to the ones that don't want to move, it's probably best to not move them. Yep. 
got you tight. Gotta go in the right direction. It helps. That one's tight. Well, this is a genuine Harley tool here, too. Colony reproduces them. They're pretty good quality. This one's lasted uh, 80 years already. So. Nice. <clears throat> Still don't move. I got one for a bicycle. I don't have one for a motorcycle. The bicycle going to hold up very well when you start doing this kind of stuff. To well, them. Th those folks are considerably bigger. And I would assume that they're under much more tension. <laughs> Just oh, saying. Yeah. How much pressure am I putting on? About that much. Okay, so these I couldn't tighten here, so it's going to induce a little bit of a wobble to it. But a little wobble versus tight, I'll take the tight any day. Mm -hmm. Now it's best to be within 30 thou, but you know. If you ever look at a tire on the road, it was like a quarter inch side to side. So that's how close you really have to be. All right. Not that close. How much air you want in there? Forty. 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 Damn. Why so much? Mm -hmm. Cause that's what Jesus recommended. I was putting between 32 to 36. Mm -hmm. I was over there talking to him one day and he's like, ah, oh, we, we put 40 in all of our bikes. That's the best thing to run. So that's how I bought the tire from. <laughs> you know why they put 40 pounds in there? I don't know, tell me. It's a good round number. Did you read the numbers on the tire? Mm -hmm. I did at one point. What's it I've say? slipped since then. What'd you say? It was like, I want to say it was like 46? 40? Yeah. 40 cold. Okay, so, so what everybody 40 say max. Use? They said they use 40. And what's, the, what's it say right here? 40 PSI, cold, max, max load. Okay, what's the max load? Max load is 375 kilograms, 827 pounds. 627 pounds. 827. Eight or six. Yep, it's got the F250 on top. The camera didn't see that because you were shooting over here. But oh. So, mm -hmm. how much is your sports we'll delay? again. Five hundred pounds. How much do you weigh? Two forty. Those two numbers together. Seven forty. So is this a unicycle? Nope. So you're splitting the load between two tires. So that means that you're probably got more uh, air in this than you need because you're not running eight hundred pounds all the time on the back tire. But to okay. tell you that because that's legally it's it's hard to argue by what the tire says on the side of it. Makes sense. But if you have a brain, you can figure the shit out for yourself. Right. Well, how the tire wears. Maybe the tire doesn't wear correctly with 40 pounds in it. Maybe it wants 48 pounds in it. Or maybe it's just wearing a lot in the center and it only needs 30 pounds in it. <clears throat> so you look at how the tire wears. And you feel it. Put your hand on there and feel it. What's it feel like? It's up and down like this. Yep. It's, so you're, it's almost like it's out of balance. So your rear shocks suck. They do. Yeah, because it's bump, 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 bump. But all your wear is in the center here. You can see it's right here. Because you got so much air in the damn thing, all it does is wear in the center. So. I usually run 32 in these things. That's plenty. Okay. You can run 34, 36. Or you can put 40 in there. It's your choice. Now it's all set maximum speed. 
and maximum load is at 40 pounds. So what's the maximum speed of this tire? It's at least 130. Is it H rated? Right there. There you go. So, 800 pounds at the back tire with at 130 mile an hour on a hot day. That's what that tire is rated for for 40 pounds. If you don't ride in those conditions, you can probably run a different number. If you run a little bit soft, it'll be a little mushy in the corners. If you do a lot of heavy cornering, if you're going down straight down the freeway, it'll run softer on your butt. If you got a little bit softer, so you get a little cushion in it, so it's not like a damn rock under there. It'll also make your shocks live a little bit longer if they don't have to work so hard with the tire to do some of the work. Rubber is supposed to give a little bit, not be rock hard all the time. So, anyway, figure it out. I got 34 in here right now with my gauge. Check it on your gauge when you get home. Okay. I'd say soften up a little bit, see if it runs better. I think it will. If it starts wearing on the outside here, then you don't have enough air. Right. If it only wears right here in the dead center, you might have too much air on it. Too much air is not good either, but they never tell you that. If the tire doesn't give a little bit in the corner to let the bead build get more on the ground, and you're on a little bit lower, you know, you're on a thinner area, you can fall down. You lose traction. So there's a point where you get maximum traction for the conditions you're doing it at. And you you figure that out by experimenting. Nobody nothing written down means anything. I don't care what they put down. Are you breaking my bar over there again? I am not. That's my adjustment tool for people like you. You've got, I've got to put it by the way. Is that in the, <clears throat> the same category as the big freaking hammer? Either that or I haven't gotten next to my lathe yet. Which, which <laughs> I want to have first. Now most people like that up there for uh, persuading tools on the counter. Yeah. Fits much better. Nobody knows what it's for though. So. What's that for? Uh, straightening bent wheels. Yeah, that's because you asked before it was. <laughs> it works pretty good on these bikes, too. You stick right in there and you can bend them right wherever you want to go. Straighten them rims right back out. Looks good. Now, if you're a dirt track racer, you know exactly what that is. You probably have one on your truck. I've used it on car wheels and bike wheels. It works on both. Go this direction. That way it doesn't get in the way of my tool I use all the time. Alright, what do you want, Scooby? Got a nail in there? No, nah, it's just rubber. Alright, that's tuned up, ready to go. Alright. See if you can break it again. I will. What do you do, Scooby?